I'm currently about to cross the threshold to being at 200 total hours into Starfield, sitting at 195 as I'm recording this commentary. And in that time, I've learned what works and what doesn't, what to throw away and what to hold on to. And specifically, I've learned what things in the game are hilariously broken and will easily carry you in a fight. In this video, I'm going to highlight the most OP stuff in Starfield. If you find yourself enjoying the video, hey, feel free to consider liking it and subscribing to the channel as we are now just a few thousand subs away from 300,000. And if I get there, you know, my dog might think that I'm actually the alpha in the house again. All right, let's dive in. Some of these will be guns. Some of them will be other things that play a big role in combat. And first up on the list is the ability called Sunless Space. This is an ability you get from one of the many temples throughout the galaxy. This one is so hilariously broken and more powerful than the others that I almost never take it off. Sunless Space, when cast, will launch an area of effect projectile that instantly freezes an enemy caught in the radius and makes them fall to the ground for several seconds. I basically save this ability for the boss combatant in any dungeon. I just toss it out and the whole crowd drops to the ground and I can just stand over the big guy with a shotgun and absolutely blow his face to bits. Or I can pull out a minigun and just go hog wild on the whole enemy group while they lay helplessly on the ground. Or you could throw a grenade into the group. The duration of this freeze is ridiculous. It's basically an instant win button. I can't recommend Sunless Space enough. Try it out. You will not be disappointed. Second on the list, it's the Revenant, a unique mag shear rifle. This thing is honestly just, it's just hilariously overpowered. Look at how easily it shreds high level enemies upwards of level 70 and higher. They fold like a wet paper towel. Mag shears in general, they tend to put in a lot of work, but this legendary version, it takes it to a whole new level. It can be found on a particularly important dead body found near the end of the Crimson Fleet quest line in an office overlooking a lot of money. If you know, you know. If you don't, then I don't want to spoil anything. But this weapon, it cuts through high-level enemies like a katana through room temperature butter. And since it takes ammo that is very commonly found on, like, Varun bodies, stockpiling ammo is really easy to do if you know where to find Varun enemies. Hint, it's Serpentis. So you can basically use it all the time if you know how to keep your ammo reserves in check. I mean, in this gameplay, I have over 13,000 rounds at the ready. Third item on the list... It's the Armor Penetration Perk. As you level up, your enemies are going to have more health and you'll more frequently run into enemies with multiple armor health bars as well. So if you invest in the Armor Penetration Perk and level it all the way up, hey, you're going to be able to frequently bypass that armor and do direct health damage instead. That's going to dramatically cut down your time to kill while also preserving more ammo. In addition to that, if you aim for weak spots and get critical hits, you'll bypass even more armor. This is incredibly good for single target damage, especially those high level captains at the ends of dungeons. Stack that with sunless space and you're going to be shredding helpless enemies lightning fast. In general, I don't find combat perks to be all that necessary, but this one has certainly earned its keep for me and I have never regretted spending the points to level it up. The fourth item on the list is the hard target sniper rifle. This thing hits like a freaking elephant and has the added bonus of using 50 caliber ammo, which is extremely common while also being semi-automatic, meaning you won't go through you know, all that ammo very quickly at all. You can clear a dungeon with it and only use 30 bullets, say, while finding 60 bullets in containers and bodies in that same dungeon. And since it has such incredible range, you can easily get cataclysmic damage numbers while in the sneak position, even if your stealth is low like mine is on this character. I only have one point into stealth and no points into marksmanship, but if you spec into high level stealth perks and marksmanship, you can basically nuke enemies from a mile away with this thing every time. And while the mag snipers 
they can hit wild damage numbers. They don't have the immediacy of the hard target, which doesn't have a charge time, so you can hit enemies that are on the run pretty easily. This weapon is a stealth character's wet dream. The fifth item on my list is the Varun Inflictor Particle Beam. This thing, it's just freaking wild. It basically is a semi-automatic carbine that has more range than, you know, a mag pulse, more range than an old earth assault rifle, a tombstone, even more range than the lawgiver. And for some reason, once you start to level up, these things are ridiculously common. I mean, you'll find them in weapon cases, you'll find them on wall-mounted weapon racks, you'll find them on Varun dead bodies, you'll have plenty to choose from. And you don't even need them to be like legendary or epic or anything. They'll put in plenty of work as a white weapon. Start adding attachments to it and it will basically carry you through any dungeon. These things have a tendency to stun and stagger enemies too, making follow-up shots extremely easy. If you pace your shots, it's really accurate. But if you start to spam, just know that it's going to start missing shots here and there unless you're like, you know, really close and you're barrel stuffing someone with it. Otherwise, these weapons live up to their name and inflict plenty of pain on the regular. She is an The sixth and last item on my list today is the Breach Shotgun. This baby has the highest physical damage rating of all the shotguns in the game by a wide margin, while also having the second highest accuracy rating that's only 1% less than the number one, the Old Earth Shotgun. In addition to all that, it also has a whopping 8 mod slots, the most in the shotgun category. This baby is probably my most used weapon in the game so far. It's highly customizable. You can tailor make it for whatever you want it to be. And if you pass a persuasion check, the Constellation main quest line has a unique breach shoddy that is absolutely killer. One of the best weapons in the game. You acquire it from the security captain in the lab where you shift from one reality back to the next and back and forth. But the breach shotgun packs a massive punch. It's great for peak shooting enemies while dipping in and around cover. It frequently staggers enemies, and if you level up the shotgun perk, it will also often stun them and knock them to the ground, making them even easier to dispatch. All in all, I cannot overhype this shotgun. It isn't fancy, it isn't flashy, but it always gets the job done efficiently. And there you have it, that's my list today of generally OP stuff in Starfield. I hope you enjoyed the list and the gameplay, but please feel free to let me know in the comments section if you think there's something OP in this game that I did not mention. Leave a like on the video only if you enjoyed it. Hey, be warm and well-fed, my friends, and I hope to catch you among the stars.